Hi there. In this video, we're going to go through a complete installation of P5. I'm going to show you how that looks on both a Mac and a Windows machine. And uh, then we're going to have a tour of uh, what you see once it's installed. So let's kick off by going to archiware.com. And from here, we're going to click on the download link, which takes us to the P5 download page. Uh, if you're after previous versions, you can click on P4 and P3 up here. So I could click on P4 if I wanted to. And uh, this is the last 4.4 P4 version, but you can actually access older versions by going into the archive down at the bottom. Anyway, back to P5. I'm running on a Mac, so I'm going to download the Mac OS X installer. We support 10.5 through 10.9 on the Mac uh, in P5. These uh, Windows Server 2008, 2012, Windows 7 and 8 desktop client versions. And then we support uh, pretty much any Linux with a 2.6 kernel and Solaris. So, without further ado, let's download the Mac version. I'm just going to uh, speed this up a moment. Okay, great, so we've got a DMG file. Let me just go find that, and I'm going to put that on the desktop. And I'm going to close the browser, mount the image, and uh, you'll see that there are different installers dependent upon which Mac OS you're running. I'm running 10.9 here, so I'm going to use this one. Um, within each of these folders, there is the standard package installer, there's an uninstaller, which is just a small application which will remove the software from the machine for you. Um, so the software will be uninstalled and optionally the configuration, so that's any indexes and settings that the customer has created on their installation, will also optionally be removed. But we don't have anything installed at the moment, so I'm going to install it first. The backup to go workstation folder contains another copy of the installer which is effectively identical to the regular one, the difference being that this one is a silent installer. So if you're wanting to roll out PressStore onto Macs uh, using Remote Desktop um, without there being any prompts and questions to answer during the installation process, then you should use this backup to go workstation installer. But for general use, this is the right one to use. Um, and it's a it's a straightforward Mac package installer. So this will be familiar to anybody that's installed software on a Mac. Uh, the README just indicates for us the directory where the software is going to be installed and once installed you access the software via a web browser at that URL. So this is the uh, IP address that will work when you're running a browser on the machine where Presto has been installed otherwise you'd need to replace that with the IP address or DNS name of the machine. So let's agree to what we need to agree to and authenticate as an admin user to allow the software to be installed. And uh, the software is going to write the uh, user local AW directory. A couple of uh, shortcut icons will appear on the desktop which will give us links to the web pages that we need to go to to administer the software. So you see those two just popped up and the installer back here was successful. And so we'll open the admin login page uh, in the default web browser once the installation's finished and you get a couple of links on the desktop here which will open uh, either, either of the two web interfaces that, that we provide. So one is the admin server, which is the one that you're looking at, and this workstation admin is a slightly different one and this is for uh, when you're backing up workstations, this web interface is used by the workstation owner to manage the backup of their workstation. So thing to thing to point out at this point is that although Presto does a number of different things and has different modules that you can purchase, there is only one installer and that installs the complete package of software and what you end up doing with that software depends on whether you uh, license the software and what the license enables. And if you want to run the software uh, in client mode, so that's where you're backing up a machine over the network back to the server, then you simply install the software but don't do any configuration on it and leave it running in the background. So having installed, uh, what we see here is the login page. And 
what we need to do here is log in as a regular operating system user. So Arcuware doesn't have its own user database. We're using the users that exist on the machine or on the AD or OD directories that the machine might be connected to. And all Arcuware needs is a valid user that the operating system can authenticate. If the user is an administrator on the machine, then they'll have admin rights over P5. If they're not an admin user, then they won't, but they may still be able to perform some tasks within P5, and we'll look at that in a later video. So this is actually an admin user that I'm authenticating as here. And so that gives me access to, uh, to the software. What we're seeing now is the main interface through which you do all of the P5 configuration. There's a bunch of icons across the top of the screen which are currently greyed out because the product isn't currently licensed. So the very first thing that you need to do with Arcuware if you're planning on configuring this installation as opposed to just leaving it running as a client is enter a license. So I'm going to click here and by clicking there we actually move into the license manager section down the left hand side. Once we've got a key in, we'll be able to access all of these grayed out icons across the top and I'll give you a kind of general overview of how the user interface works. So the license manager requires that we add a license and you can see there's a couple of different ways of doing that. You can either do an, a manual keying in of a license or you can import a key from a file. Now licenses come in two forms. There are demo licenses which resellers have uh, access to which allow the software to be activated uh, on a time limited demo for the purposes of evaluating and learning the product. And then there are purchased keys which a customer would receive when purchasing the software. And the purchase keys are managed via a website called the Archiweb Portal. And I'm just going to jump to that now because that's relevant at this point. So if we go back to Archiware.com, you'll see at the very top here there's a link to the portal website. And the portal website um, requires that you register. So you would have to click on new account and provide some information about yourself and a username and a password. And once you've done that, you can log in. You can then manage customers' keys so that, that may be you're a reseller and you have customers or you are the customer and uh, by providing the serial number that's provided on purchase and the host ID uh, of the machine on which the license needs to be installed you can generate activation keys so the, the, the way a key looks if we click the add manually button is it consists of a serial number this is what a license looks like uh, and a license key and the host ID, which is displayed here, is required to generate that license key. So it may be that you'll need to install the software on the customer's machine to find out what the host ID is before you can generate the, uh, the permanent key for that host. So I am going to use a demo key to show you uh, around the product. So this is going to be a channel evaluation license that expires on the 1st of, not May, but June. May at the moment and the license key looks like that so I will apply and uh, close that window the license I just entered shows up in the list and you can see now that uh, the icons across the top are somewhat more colorful than they were a little earlier now uh, that was entering a demo key and you'll notice when entering a demo key uh, there is an expiry date so the date that I entered, the 1st of June, is the date that that key will no longer function. If you're entering a purchased license, then from this drop-down list, you'll be choosing the kind of license that is that you purchased. So maybe it was a Professional Edition 48. And then what you would do is type in your serial number up here. And you'll notice that the date field here isn't an expiry date, but it's a maintenance expires date. And what this means is that when the product is purchased, it comes with a year's maintenance and updates, and there'll be a date on which that will expire, but that can be renewed. So there will always be a date where your maintenance expires. It might be uh, a year ahead or it might be quite close. And all you're doing here is letting Prestor know what that date is because that's part of what's needed for entering a license. And when that date passes, 
um, there'll be a warning when you log into the software that your maintenance has expired, but it doesn't stop the product running. I just want to be clear about that. So the maintenance expiry date is purely a date where a contract ends. It has nothing to do with the software functioning. The software will run uh, indefinitely once you've installed it. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. Um, so the demo key that I've entered here activates all the modules. If you had a key which you'd purchased uh, that was just a backup license, then the backup to go, synchronize and archive modules would be grayed out and you would just be restricted in the web interface to configuring the backup module. Uh, in a separate video, I'm going to give a quick run through of the distinctions between these four modules because that's important to know. But uh, we have the product installed here, so I'm just going to quickly give you a run through of how the web interface works. The, um, the interface is, is, is fairly simple, it's not particularly, uh, it doesn't use flash, it's not graphics heavy, it will work over relatively slow connections, so you don't have to be directly sitting on the machine where Prestor is installed, you can admin it from any machine over the network. We support recent versions of Chrome and Safari, Firefox, Internet Explorer, etc. So that means it's a very flexible product to use because you can administer it from wherever you're sitting. Um, the Just to run across the top from left to right, and the home section provides an overview of the products that you can configure. The license manager we've already looked at, log out, self-evident, backup. Uh, each of the main four modules that you're going to configure has a getting started section which which basically has a simple wizard to allow you to configure a backup or an archive by just going through a few clicks. Um, the overview tells you what the current state of your backup workflow is, what plans you've got configured, when they last ran, are they successful, so on. Uh, and then everything else down here is all specific to this particular product, so I'm not going to go through this at this point. Uh, Likewise for all the other products. So each product has its own set of options, including some additional options that sit down at the bottom. The restore area is common to all the products and allows you to basically restore files that you've backed up or archived or, uh, or backed up from workstations. So this is basically providing access to indexes, which are relational databases, which will allow you to see a snapshot of file systems uh, and folders that you've been backing up and archiving and trigger restores, be that coming back from tape or disk. Over here, the logs and jobs button provides access to the job monitor window, which is uh, a universal window that allows monitoring of running jobs, allows you to see uh, if jobs which have completed were successful and see detail like how much data was backed up. Uh, you can also start and stop jobs from here and at the top once you've got scheduled jobs like a backup job which runs every day you'll see that uh, sitting and it'll tell you when it's going to start and so on. So you can also filter so if you're only interested in seeing backup jobs uh, from a particular client machine you can restrict what you're looking at. The other option in that menu is the history and log button which is um, Kind of the same, but it doesn't show you active running jobs. It just shows you a history of all the jobs which have run on the system. It's paginated because obviously there might be lots of jobs. Uh, and you can again filter by clicking on the options down the left hand side. Uh, and then finally over here, the P5 kind of general everything else button provides you with a user guide, which is a PDF manual for the product, which uh, you're welcome to read later. Uh, license registration, which takes you directly to that portal website, which I mentioned earlier, so there's an easy way to get to it from within the product. Uh, tech support and product updates are links to the ArchiWare site, so product updates, for example, takes you to the download page that we looked at a little earlier on. Um, agent setup, configuration restore, download support data, these are more complex options. Agent setup is um, about configuring client machines. Uh, for backup. Configuration Restore is again a backup option where you're trying to recover everything from tape. Download Support Data is uh, very useful. This basically downloads a zip file uh, and on my machine it's been expanded and in that zip file we get a copy of all of the system logs, ArchiWare's logs, uh, uh, the actual configuration of Prestor, everything in one place. So if you're trying to submit information about a problem then uh, you can just go to download support data and provide the, um, the resulting file 
back to RQware or to your local partner. And finally about P5, just the splash screen, the version, the build, and the host ID that's required for generating licenses and the current serial number in use. So that's what everything looks like on the Mac. Next we're going to have a quick look at the installation part of things on Windows. Okay, so here we have a Windows Server 2012 R2 operating system and um, we're going to install ArchiWare P5 on, on here. So I'm going to run Chrome. ArchiWare is set to be my home page, so that comes straight up. I'm going to go to the download section and I'm going to pull down the Windows Server. You can see here that Server 2012 is a supported operating system. Here comes the installer and I'm just going to click there and run it. Let's get the browser window out of the way, close that one down. So um, the it's a pretty standard installer much like on the Mac. You agree to the license terms. Um, uh, P5 is currently 32-bit software so you'll see that it installs into the x86 program files directory and then RQware and then Presto so that's where the software is going to be written to. A couple of clicks of next and software is being installed. You'll see there's a, uh, a shell window runs briefly to copy some of the files into place and then once the installation is complete you close the installer window and the command line window. So after installation you'll see down here in I think what's called the system tray area there's a P5 icon, uh, a P icon rather, and this uh, allows you to see if the service is running, to stop the service, to restart the service, to open the um, web interface in the browser and I'm just going to click here to make sure that this um, system tray application runs at startup. So P5 runs as a service in the background and once installed it's configured to start up when the machine boots. So you don't need to be logged into the machine for P5 to be running in the background and performing backups for you and so on. So let's manually open the web interface in Chrome um, by, if I just make a new tab, going to localhost colon 8000 which is the default login page and then you can see p5 is installed running on win32 I'm going to log in with my admin account and bingo we see the um, the first screen that you would normally see after installation so there ends the Windows section. Everything from this point onwards will be the same on Mac and Windows. Right, so back to the Mac. Uh, I hope that was all clear and made sense. Uh, thanks for watching.